so today I'm gonna to be working on a Robin Mead inspired um, landscape. So you can decide to start whether you want your paper going tall, which is vertical, or whether you want your paper going horizontal. So that's really up to you for your landscape picture. So I think I'm gonna start with my paper going horizontal. And her landscapes have usually mountains, they might have trees, they might have flowers, there might be uh, a water in it. So I'm gonna be starting with a water landscape, but before I start, I want mountains and water. So I'm gonna start with a horizon line. That's the line that separates the sky from where the ground is. So I'm gonna start my horizon line. I want mountains, so I'm gonna start with kind of just soft rolling mountains. You could do a straight line across, that's up to you. And then maybe I want like a mountain peak back here and maybe like a tiny one here. I'm happy with that. Now, if I'm gonna add water waves in here instead, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different type of line. So the hills are very, very soft, but the water is more, you know, flowy or it might be a little bit more wavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with just where my water line would be. I'm just gonna use kind of a soft, wavy line for the water line. That's way in the back. And then maybe I want waves in the front. So I'm gonna start showing some lines that show waves. And I can overlap because I can erase later on. And maybe I want that to swirl in. And maybe there's another one that swirls in here. And then I've got a few lines. I can just bring in lines just to show the movement of the water. So maybe I'll add a wave here and like just a wavy line here. So just kind of using line to show motion of the water. And then maybe a few extra lines just to show the movement. Okay, once I have my water waves, if there are lines that overlap, you can take your pencil and go back and erase. And we're gonna draw a light. Remember, the harder you push, the harder it is to erase, and sometimes you can't get rid of it at all. So make sure that you are drawing lightly so you can go back and erase those lines. And then when you're happy, you can go back in and darken those lines up. So once I get my water waves drawn, maybe I wanna put a city in front of the uh, mountains. That's really up to you. The next step, she usually adds a sun in her picture, a setting sun typically. So I'm gonna go ahead and right through here, I'm gonna do it right in the middle. I'm gonna add a half circle to show the setting sun. And then she uses lines to show the rays. So your lines can be in groups. Maybe I want some lines over here that are in groups, groups of three. Maybe I'll do three here. And then you could add more if you wanted to. One, two, three. Not too much, because keep in mind you have to sharpie everything. Um, so once we get our lines drawn, you can decide if you want to add patterns on your hills. Sometimes she leaves the hills plain, and then sometimes she uses line to show pattern, which you could do. And you don't have to, but if you wanted to add lines like this, you could. Maybe this one goes behind, bring that down. This one goes in the back. So maybe this mountain has this pattern, and then maybe the next mountain has lines that go up. And again, you don't have to add this. This is just something you can add if you wanted to add a little bit more pattern to your picture. At this point then, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna Sharpie everything. All right, so once the drawing gets done, now we have to decide what we're gonna to use to color it. And you can use all of the things that I have here. We can use markers, crayons, color pencils, and watercolors. Or you can limit it to a few things if you want to, or you can do all of one. Um, watercolor is kind of fun to play with, so we can get some different uh, variety of colors and mixing. Um, so it's really up to you. So I'm gonna move my supplies out of the way. And I did wanna talk about, if you are painting, um, if you have different size paintbrushes, it's fine and it's, it, you can use different sizes. However, just keep in mind, bigger brushes are for bigger spaces and littler brushes are for littler spaces. It does make it a lot easier to use a variety of sizes of brushes. If you have a small one, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna start. I also have my paper towel and then I just have a little bowl of water. So 
Um, the artwork, the artist that we're looking at, Robin Mead, does a lot of really bright, bold colors and mixes of colors. So if you're gonna do any sort of marker work, if you have washable markers, you might wanna wait to use your washable markers at the end and leave things that you wanna color with the washable markers at the very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, my sky. And now you can either paint wet paint right onto dry paper, that's called wet on dry, or you can do wet on wet. That's where you take water and you wet your paper first, just with clean water, just where you want it to go. You don't have to do all of it. I'm just gonna do the top. This is called wet on wet painting because you're putting wet paint on wet paper. And it does make the paint move around a little bit better, but I'm just gonna do the sky. And because it's a sunset, I might do like reds or maybe I'll do a blue into red and then into the yellow next to the sun. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with, I think I'm gonna do a, a blue. Like the night sky is just barely up here at the top. And because it's wet, it does blend really well and it fades really well. So blue, I'm gonna tap my brush, makes you tap out, tap out your water. And then maybe I'll go into, um, let's go into a purple. Let's put a tiny bit of purple in here. Now you do have to sometimes brush your paints in order to pick up some of the colors. Some of the colors don't pick up as well. It depends on what kind of paints that you have. And we're just gonna use our water and our paint and the blue that's already kind of wet. And you can actually mix those in a little bit. It gives you a beautiful, um, like a blue violet. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna tap my brush out tap, 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 wipe some water off. And then I'm gonna go into like a, um, maybe add a reddish color in here because red and purple are gonna blend really nice. Get that water in there and mix. So once you get water with it, it helps the purple and the red to mix. And you could just do orange and yellow in your sky. You don't have to do what I'm doing. This is just what I choose to do. And that's how you kind of get that sunset look if that's what you're looking for. And then I'm gonna maybe go into an orange. So I'm working my way down the colors here. And a little bit of orange in there. And I'm gonna save some spots to do. I'm gonna put some orange up here too. The yellow, so tap my brush. And now I'm gonna do a yellow, kind of a gold and yellow in here. Just kind of mix that in with the orange. And I kind of go and I work in circles in, in, in a way. Just kind of mix those two colors together. And you can definitely overlap some of the yellow. Be careful, the yellow and purple, they can mix and make like a brown, so just be careful. But just kind of work your way through and build up that beautiful, beautiful um, sky that you want. And I think I just painted a mountain on accident. No, I did not, no, that's okay, that's the sky. And if you do, no worries, um, you can put marker over that when it dries. So now I'm gonna work on my sun. I might just go full on yellow for my sun. And then maybe I'll do a little bit of, yeah, uh, maybe an orange. We'll do an orange down in here. Just a little bit of warmth, right? By the mountains. And you can even go around if you wanted to. Maybe I'll do a little bit there. Okay, done. So now I um, can paint the water if I want to, or maybe I want to use crayons. I'm gonna switch to crayons, I think. And I'm gonna start my hills. I'm gonna use different shades of yellows and greens for my for my hills. And I'm gonna start coloring that. 